In this lesson, we are going to continue to look at scale diagrams and scale factors. Uh, we are on example three, but before I like, I'd like to go over example three and four, I'd like to skip forward. So if you're in my class, you might want to skip forward in your study guide to the key ideas uh, to help explain some of the key ideas before we get into the examples, because they may be helpful. <clears throat> So key idea number one is that scale factors can be represented in three ways. As a fraction, and fractions, for example, like two-fifths. As a decimal, so it could be something like 0.4, or as a percent, which would be something like 40%. Um, <clears throat> a reduction of the original object, so if something's getting smaller, it's represented by a proper fraction, which is like two-fifths, for example. Uh, a decimal number smaller than one. So if something's getting smaller, the decimal should be smaller than 1, or a percent less than 100, so something like 40%. Whereas um, in the next key idea, if you're making something larger than it actually is, so enlargement of the original object, that would be represented by an improper fraction. So for example, something like 5 over 2 would be something getting larger. Uh, a decimal number larger than 1, so 2.5, would be uh, some form of an enlargement or a percent larger than 100%, so 250% would be an enlargement. <clears throat> Another important thing that is, is this, second key idea, is that a scale factor, if you'd like to determine a scale factor or use a scale factor, before you do that, it must be resent, represented sorry, in the same type of units. And you'll see that in the first example we go over in just a minute. <clears throat> now, uh, just a diagram here that may be helpful because since scale factors can be represented in fractions, decimals, or percents. You might want to know how to convert between them. So this diagram may be useful uh, for doing that. So to go from a percent, for example, to a fraction, uh, here's what you would do. You would just take the percent and put it over 100 because percent is always out of 100, and then you would reduce it. If I was to show you the example here, which is 225%, if I wanted to make that a fraction, it would be 225 over 100, and if I wanted to reduce that, I could divide these each by 25, and I would end up with 9 over 4 as my fraction. Okay, so there's an example. Um, to go from a fraction to a percent, I wouldn't necessarily <clears throat> do it in one step, so I'm going to cross out that arrow. We'd actually like to go from a fraction to a decimal, so how do I represent 9 over 4 as a decimal? And all you do is you just divide the fraction. So you can write that here. Uh, to go from a fraction to a decimal, you just divide the fraction. So uh, for example, 9 over 4, just do 9 divided by 4, and you'll get 2.25. So that would be here, 9 divided by 4, which is 2.25. So there's what your decimal equivalent would be. Uh, to do the opposite, from a decimal to a fraction, I wouldn't actually do it in one step. I would go from a decimal to a percent, and then from a percent to a fraction. So the last thing we need to cover is these two arrows. So to go from a decimal to a percent, all we do is times by 100. So if I'd like to go from 2.25 to a percent, I would just times it by 100. And I have 225%. Uh, and to go from a percent to a decimal is exactly the opposite. You just divide by 100. Okay, uh, so if I'd like to go from 225% to a decimal, I could divide by 100, and I'd have 2.25. So there's an example of how to do all of these. Now let's go over two examples. First example says this. The diameter of the animal cell that is represented by, sorry, there's a typo there, by the scale diagram is actually 0.25 millimeters. So the animal cell that we're looking at, the actual, is 0 0.25 millimeters, okay? And it says here uh, that the diagram, if we look at the actual diagram, its diameter is 3.5 centimeters, okay? And it says, what scale factor was used to draw this scale diagram? Represent your answer as a fraction, decimal, and percent. There's two ways of doing it. Uh, one way is if you remember that scale factors are always... Uh, a ratio of diagram over actual, that would be useful. However, if you forgot that, you should understand that since this diagram is larger than the actual anima cell, that your scale factor would have to be larger than 1 or larger than 100% or an improper fraction. So even if you didn't remember this, 
you should understand that it's going to be, <clears throat> because it's an enlargement, that means that your scale factor is going to be bigger than 1 or bigger than 100% or an improper fraction. Okay, uh, which is helpful because when you look at these two numbers here, 3.5 centimeters or 0.25 millimeters, it's quite evident that the diagram is much larger. So even if you uh, didn't know how to set it up, we know that the scale factor would be uh, the diagram, because it has to be improper, 3.5 centimeters over the actual, which is 0 0.25 millimeters. Now, before we can determine the scale factor, one thing that was mentioned is that you have to have the same units. So, right now our units are centimeters and millimeters. So, if I'd like to convert my centimeters to millimeters, I would times by 10 because there's 10 millimeters per centimeter. And I would have 35 millimeters over 0 0.25 millimeters. So, at this particular moment, we have our scale factor. Our scale factor, because our units are the same, is 35 over 0 0.25. Now, we don't tend to represent fractions in decimal form. Now, one thing we may want to do, so this is our fraction. We may want to make this into a decimal. So if I divide it, so if I do 35 divided by 0 0.25, I get 140. So 140 is my decimal scale factor. And if to go from a decimal to a percent, we multiply by 100. So my scale factor as a percent would be 14,000%. So it's 14,000% or 140 times bigger. <clears throat> now, uh, the only one that doesn't look like it should is, it's not incorrect, but we don't want decimal numbers in our fractions. So what we could do here is if I multiply this by 4, I would get something over 1, and that would be 140 over 1. That's my best answer as far as my scale factor goes. So my scale factor as a fraction would be 140 over 1. As a decimal would be 140. And as a percent would be 14,000. All right, one more example. Example 4 says the following two polygons are similar. Determine the lengths of sides h, x, and y to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Similar means that they are exactly proportional. One is exactly larger than the other, and one is exactly smaller than the other, and it's proportional. So what we want to do in order to find out the scale factor is find the two corresponding sides that we have lengths of. And those corresponding sides are these two right here. Okay. Let me highlight the other sides uh, corresponding parts. So you have to understand that there's corresponding parts of similar shapes. <clears throat> to determine the scale factor, so in other words, how could I determine what I'd multiply by to go from 8 to 6? And the easiest way to do that is to divide. Now we know, you may want to ask yourself, uh, is that scale factor going to be 8 over 6 or is it 6 over 8? <clears throat> Okay, we could find out both decimals. If I do 8 divided by 6, I'll get 1.33. If I do 6 divided by 8, I'll get 0 0.75. Okay, uh, now why it's useful, and I don't like to use diagram over actual all the time, it's just to, under, to understand if something's getting smaller or larger. If something's getting, to go from 8 to 6, from the larger object to the smaller object, things are getting smaller, so the scale factor must be less than 1, or a proper fraction. So here, I would use a scale factor of 0 0.75, which means that if I like to go the other way, the opposite of multiplying is dividing, I could divide by 0 0.75. And that's going to be the easiest way, once you know the multiplier or divider, it's going to be the easiest way to find out and calculate the side lengths of corresponding parts of similar shapes. So. Let's calculate what x is. So we know to go from 10 to x, we're going to times by 0 0.75. So if I do 10 times 0 0.75, I will get 7.5 centimeters. Next, if I wanted to find out, for example, what y was, I would also times by 0 0.75. Okay. So if I want to find out y, I would do 5 times 0 0.75, and that's equivalent to 3.75 centimeters. 
However, the question says to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, so that would be 3.8 centimeters. And finally, to discover what h is, I'm going from the smaller to the larger object, or in other words, I would divide by 0 0.75. So for h, I would do 9.5 divided by 0 0.75, and that gives me 12.666 continued, which is 12.7 centimeters. So that's how we can determine scale factors and use them to apply to corresponding parts.